Thank you, Lord. God is so good. One more time, tell your neighbor, I believe in the supernatural. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to stick to my notes, but I don't know. This seems like one of those services. It can go all kind of different directions. Amen. But we need to make, make sure it's spirit-led. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the spirit lead. Well, real quickly, uh, I'm, I'm going to just, I, I want to, uh, I'd like to open uh, with, again, re- reminding you guys of what the word supernatural means because there are people watching online. There's people in this room that have never heard it. And then also, listen to me, it's good to be reminded of it. Can I get an amen? And so I want to do that. Also, just uh, just so blessed because I've been teaching and you guys have just been really absorbing and I love it because when I teach a lot, some people's like, Pastor, I want I want you to preach, but how many guys know there's just a time we got to teach because teaching will help us grow. Can I get an amen? And so and so, let let me give you once again what the word supernatural means. It means an event, an event. You can highlight that an event or a manifestation of things that cannot be explained by nature or science. You could also underline the word force. How many guys know it's a force or a realm of activity of unseen agents, unexplained by science and beyond the laws of nature? Now, today I'm going to give you a different example, a different example. An example of this would be, would be, and this is just, I just, I believe God's going to steer us in a whole different direction on this, but a good example of this would be the supernatural favor of God. Excuse me, would be the supernatural favor of God. Supernatural favor of God. Why? Why? Because God's favor will always bring supernatural results to your life that cannot be explained by science. Cannot be explained by man. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And that's what that's what that's what the supernatural favor of God will do in your life. You can't explain it. Like I don't know how it happened, but how many guys know it's just God's favor? Has anybody experienced the supernatural favor of God? <clears throat> Come on, amen. Amen, amen. It is a, it, the favor is a force. Favor is a, a force and it's also an event. It's something that, that transpires. Favor is a force that you cannot see, but as a Christian, it surrounds you. Come on, somebody. And so watch this, watch this real quickly, which real quickly. How many guys know God's favor? God's favor can cause you to go from a season of loss to a season of, of, of gain in one day. <clears throat> in one day. In one day. How many guys know that's that's supernatural favor? How many God's God's favor can turn around a mess in a moment that took years to mess up? Oh, there ought to be some of you in this room know what I'm talking about right there. What took years to mess up God, God changed it in a moment. Are y'all hearing me? How many guys know that supernatural favor? Supernatural favor. You can't explain it. All you can say is God. And how many guys know God is a supernatural God? That's why it's supernatural. Amen. God's favor. God's favor. I've seen this happen. God's favor can prompt people to bless you, and they they don't even know why. They just walk up to you and they bless you. They don't even know why. I just know like I'm supposed to bless you. I just know I'm supposed to bless you. Quick, a quick testimony, quick testimony, quick story. When, when, when some of you may not know this in the room, when, when Pastor Paul got launched into full-time ministry, because I, I, was, I was working a full-time job and doing ministry for a long time. But before I got launched into full-time ministry, I was praying and talking to God about it. Not to be in full-time ministry, just asking God, how do I handle, you know, I don't want to burn out because I was burning the candle at both ends. I said, Lord, I don't want to burn out. I can feel I'm getting close to that place, and I'm, I'm doing everything I can to keep that from happening. And, and God spoke to me, and he, and, he, and he spoke to me, and then I shared it with Mike. God spoke to me. He says, he said this to me. He, says, he told me, he said, this breakthrough is going to happen within a couple weeks. God told me that. But then also God specific, gave me some other specifics that I didn't tell anybody and ended up sharing with my wife. <clears throat> Long story short, I talked to the Lord. The Lord told me he was going to put me into full-time ministry. And I already, I've already known that. I just didn't know how God was going to provide for that. And all of a sudden, the, listen to me, this man, this man who I'd never met in my life, never met him in my life, this man shows up, shows up on a Wednesday night looking for Pastor Paul. He looks for me. I take him to my office. He begins to share some things with me. I said, I'm going to bring my wife in this office because she needs to hear what you're saying. And this man, this man, this man, unknowing that I've asked the Lord when he put me in full-time ministry that I didn't want the church to have to pay for it. I wanted it to be provided for supernaturally. 
This man walks him off and said, the Lord spoke to me, told me to come here tonight to let you know that I'm supposed to pay your salary for three years. <clears throat> how many guys know that supernatural favor? And at first, how many of you guys know, at first, he, he was so right on with what he was saying, I didn't have a little doubt kicking yet. But when he said, I'm supposed to pay your salary for three years, how many of you guys know the enemy right there tried to throw a little doubt in there? And then he kept talking to him like, no, this guy heard from heaven because nobody else knows this but Jesus. And, and it took a little while, it took a little while, but during Christmas, this man shows up and he says, I have the check. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And he paid a year, and then the next year he paid, he paid the other two. And so my, my sire was paid for. I went into full-time ministry without the church having to, to carry that, having to carry that. And God supernaturally provided, provided for me to be in full-time ministry where I could get a salary that the church didn't have to cover. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? That's supernatural favor. God prompted this man. He didn't fully know why, but God just spoke to him told him to bless me. Come on, somebody. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something, church. How many of you guys know that God, when you've got the favor of God in your life, listen to me, listen to me, the favor of God can even cause your haters, can even cause your enemies to bless you. Can I get an amen? That's the supernatural favor of God, supernatural favor of God. God's favor can, can cause, and I've seen this happen, I, I believe supernatural favor can cause your finances to increase without you even getting a pay raise. Like, how did that happen? I call it God's crazy math. Because you, because you tithe? Are y'all hearing me? That opens the windows. Because you're a believer, you're a Christian, you've got the favor of God. When you start mixing all these godly ingredients, you're going to get godly results. Can I get an amen? And you begin to see these things manifest in your life. And that's called the supernatural favor of God. Now, I've got another testimony I'll share on that at another time, but I've got to keep moving. So today, you guys ought to know, I'm going to speak on the subject of the supernatural favor of God. Y'all can shout, I said, on the supernatural favor of God. <clears throat> Amen. So let me give you real quickly, because this is so important. You've, you've, got, you've got to have this um, understanding and this insight. Let me give you a biblical definition of what God's favor is. I'll give you a biblical definition of what God's favor is, not, not Webster's. I'm going to give you a biblical definition of what God's favor is. Now watch this. It's this. It's an expression of God's goodness and grace on you that brings, that brings supernatural influence and divine assistance. I'm not done yet. Watch out. This is the next one. It's God's, watch this. It's God's loving and graceful act of doing something for you that you cannot do for yourself. is powerful it's God giving you access to what grace has already provided hallelujah and, and you got to realize you got to capture this you got to capture this you've got to remember that what is grace grace is the undeserved undeserved unmerited what favor of God so grace has already provided it you say well where does faith come in what faith does is, is faith, faith, faith taps in to what grace is already provided. So when you use your faith, you're not, not trying to create something that isn't already been provided for by you, by Jesus. Grace has already provided, probably provided it for you through the death, burial, and resurrection. It's been paid for in full. Are y'all hearing me? But it takes faith to open the gift. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? It takes faith to open up what grace has already provided for us. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. And so, and so, and so I'm telling you guys that that is the supernatural favor of God. And so watch, watch. And, and can I just say, I know, I know I'm short on top, but don't y'all look at the clock. Y'all look at me. Can I get an amen? Y'all look at me. Y'all look at me. Listen to me. And I want you to realize something. When I say when I say faith taps into what grace has already provided, how many of you guys know that's favor? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so you got to understand. It's it's like when we're believing God for something, we're believing God for something. I wish I had a hundred dollar bill on me, but when we're believing God for something, 
How many guys, I'll just take this bottle of water. If you're believing God just for water, you're believing God for provision. How many of you guys know the water's here? It's here. Your healing is here. Your deliverance is here. Your breakthrough is right here. It's already been provided. It's already been taken care of. It's already been created. But faith takes what's already been provided for you and me. Can I get an amen? And because we can have that access to do that by faith, that's favor. That's the favor of God on our life. Amen. All right, y'all hear me? So remember, favor is God's giving you access to what grace has already provided. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll, you'll, that'll be clear in just a moment. Watch this. Let me, let me back this up with the scripture real quick. I got to do that because you always got those, those people that, that are real theological in the room. So Psalms 512 says this. For you, O Lord, will bless, will bless the righteous. That's why you can say I'm blessed. He says, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. And how many guys know we're righteous? And here's the challenge. And this is why a lot of people don't think that they're favored by the Lord. You've got to really say, well, I'm not very righteous. We know you're not righteous, but he is. And because he is, you are. It's because of the blood. It's the blood. It's because of the grace of God that you have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. You've been made righteous in who? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So you're blessed. Tell your neighbor, I'm blessed. That's part of it. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous with what? With favor. So everybody say favor. favor. With favor, you will surround him or her as with a shield. As with a shield. As with a shield. So that means I'm blessed, but I'm also highly favored. Are y'all hearing me? I'm blessed because of who I am in Christ, but because of who I am in Christ, I'm also surrounded with His favor. And because I'm surrounded with His favor, I'm highly favored by Him. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And so, so watch this. So, so you got to remember, that means God's children, God's children uh, uh, are blessed and God's favor surrounds them like what? It said like a shield. And so the shield of favor, the shield of favor, now, now capture this. The shield of favor is an invisible field. The shield of favor, it's a force. It's an invisible field of supernatural favor that causes supernatural results in your life. Did y'all catch that? It's, it's, it's a force. It's a force that surrounds us. That's the favor of God that surrounds me. I can't see it with my natural eyes, but it's there in the spirit realm. That's why it's supernatural. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why we can call it supernatural. But it's around me. It's around me. It's around me. Tell your neighbor, I've got the favor of God. <clears throat> the problem is most people don't believe it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So they don't see any supernatural results. And so let me continue. Let me continue. Um, I could say it like this. Uh, just because just, just I want everybody in this room to catch this. Everybody, real quick, just say, I'm blessed and highly favored. <clears throat> now, I, I want you to say it. Not just because I told you to repeat it. I want you to say it. I want you to say it, not just from the head, but from the heart. I want you to say it. I want you to, it's, it's, it's a declaration. It's a proclamation. I'm going to show you where even Jesus did that here in a moment. And listen to me, you've got to, you've got to learn to, to declare because you can't demonstrate until you de- can declare. But if you learn to declare, then you will see demonstration. This is so good. Come on, somebody. So real quick, and one more time, everybody say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Go. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We just made the devil mad. Come on, somebody. I really believe it. It makes them mad. It makes them mad that you know that you know some of your righteous rights as a believer. It makes them mad. It upsets him. And so, so listen to me. So, what, so if God's favor, if God surrounds you and me, if God's favor surrounds you and me like a shield, and how many guys know the scriptures tells us, it's not on the screen, but you can read it later. It's in Psalms 35. He says his favor is for life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So if God's favor surrounds uh, you and me like a shield and his favor is for life, that means, that means that we are positioned, that means because it's for life, that means we're, and it surrounds us, that means we're positioned for supernatural turnarounds, 
for way making provisions, for open doors to God opportunities, to divine dreams, divine connections, to divine protection, and supernatural influence to, to listen to me, listen to me, watch supernatural influence to advance God's kingdom on earth. Can I get an amen? That's what the supernatural favor is for. It's not just so you can say, I, uh, I've got favor for the parking spot, though God will give you the parking spot because you got favor. But how many guys, my wife's got that kind of favor on her. She does. Just simply because she's a child of God, because God loves her, he does that for her. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? But it goes beyond that. How many guys know he also wants you to, listen, he might give you the front row so you can be a light. Come on, somebody. Does somebody park next to you or did the person who got mad because you got it first? Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all serious this morning. Amen, come on. Christmas is coming up. Don't, don't get me wrong. You want that favor of God on your life. Can I get an amen? Y'all know how people act in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So you want the favor of God on your life. Amen. So watch this. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. And, and I'm going to get to point number one. I promise I'm getting there. But watch this. Listen to me. <clears throat> in Jesus' first sermon, this, you got to realize this is Jesus' first sermon. He talked about how it was time. He said, it's time to unleash. Jesus said, it's time to unleash the unmerited favor of God. That's what he did. And, and, and he's preaching this, man. He's pre- he preaches his very first sermon. He says, it's time to unleash the unmerited favor of God. And what he did is he read, he read from a, a prophecy. He read from a passage in Isaiah. And it's funny, he's reading this and then he preaches this. And, and he is the fulfilled prophecy. And so watch, this is found in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. I'm going to give you two verses. And I love it. I love it. He says this. you got to remember, this is Jesus. He says, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, let's declare, he sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see, and that the oppressed will be what said free. In verse 19, And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Hallelujah! Woo! Amen. That the time of the Lord's favor has come. Jesus is saying a lot of things here, but one thing he is saying, he's saying signs, wonders, and miracles are because of God's supernatural, watch his supernatural power, but also because of his supernatural favor. And he's saying, listen to me, and the time of the Lord's favor has come. It's for now. Tell your neighbor, it's for now. It wasn't just for the Old Testament people. It's also for the New Testament people. Come on, can I get an amen? That favor is for now. Tell your neighbor, it's for you. If you're a believer, it's for you. Amen? And so, so many people, so many people, and this is, this is what I find. Many Christians, many Christians don't, don't believe it's for them. They don't believe it's for them. And listen to me, it, it is specifically for the church. It is specifically for Christians. The favor of God, if you're a believer, it is for you. But so we have so many Christians who do not do not tap in, so many Christians who do not experience, so many Christians who do not see it manifest or see it work in their life because they simply don't think, they don't think that God loves them, that God loves them enough to do that for them because they've made mistakes, because they've had challenges, and because they keep messing up. So they think God is mad at them. God is not mad at you. And you've got to realize that his love is unconditional. There's not a condition you can put that can cause God to stop from loving you. He loves you because that's who he is. God is love. And all he can do is love you. Man can fail you, but God will never fail you. And because he loves you, because he loves you that much, he favors you. You are his favorites. Like my wife likes to say, she says, I'm his favorite. You are his favorite. You are his favorite. And because you are a child of God, you are a child of God, that means you are in covenant relationship with Jesus. And because you're in covenant relationship with him, you have the favor of God on your life. Amen. Me and my wife are in covenant relationship because we're in covenant relationship. She has favor with me. Now watch this. Just because she has favor with me doesn't mean I'm going to do everything she has. So watch this. So just because you got favor doesn't mean God's always going to do what you ask. But, he, uh, but listen, what he will do, he will do things that, you, that he knows you need. Come on, somebody. So if I know she needs something, I'm not going to say no. I said, baby, we're going to find a way. 
And if I could bless you, I'm going to bless you. And she's got favor with me. Listen, you've got that same kind of favor with God. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor I'm blessed and highly favored. You got to believe it. You got to believe it to receive it. You got to know that you're blessed and highly favored. I'm going to encourage you guys. I'm going to encourage you guys. Listen to me. That does not need to be a proclamation that we quit using in the church. We need to proclaim. We need to proclaim. Remember, I told you proclaim means to prophesy. It means to, 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 to declare. It means to preach it. You need to preach it to yourself in the mirror. You need to preach it to yourself every single day. When circumstances start talking, when the enemy starts talking, when your flesh starts talking, you need to start declaring. You need to start proclaiming. Say, I am blessed and highly favored. I may be in a storm right now, but I've got Jesus with me in the storm. And if Jesus is with me in the storm... I can say, speak, speak to the storm, and the storm will cease because Jesus is with me. Can I get an amen? Because I'm speaking the name, speaking the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus. How many guys know the, there is power in the name of Jesus? There is. There's power in the name of Jesus. And so, watch this. Number one is this. Number one is this. I'll have to move a little fast. Number one is this. The super, watch this, the supernatural favor of God can cause great things to happen in the midst of great impossibilities. I've said that in a different way before. Watch, supernatural favor of God can cause great things to happen in the midst of great impossibilities. Now, now we're going to do something. We're going to do something. We're going to, we're going to look. We're going to look at how the supernatural favor of God caused a supernatural turnaround in, in Ruth's life. In Ruth's life. And we're going to read from Ruth chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And I've, I've, I've read from Ruth before and I've read cha- I've, I did chapter one we're gonna go to chapter two and um, and uh, and it, it was just one of those things like when it comes to favor every time I hear favor I just jump to Ruth or I jump or I jump to Joseph a lot I, I just for whatever reason I'll either go to Joseph or I go to to Ruth and I really like Lord I kind of wanted to do Joseph but I felt like the Ruth told me to stay the Lord told me to stick with Ruth. And so today I'm going to give you just real quickly before we get into the scripture, I want to I want to give you a quick overview about Ruth before I read. Because if some of y'all caught when I talked about chapter one, you'll, you'll be caught up to speed, but not everybody is in the room. So watch this. Um, now watch this. Naomi, we're going to read about Naomi. Naomi's Ruth's and Orpah's mother-in-law. She's the mother-in-law of these, of these two girls. And all of their husbands pass away. If you go back to chapter one, they all pass away. Now, this is the cool thing. This is the cool thing, and I preached on this. Uh, Ruth chooses to stay with Naomi and return with her back to her homeland, which is in, in Bethlehem. So they're going to go from Moab. They're going to go back to, to Bethlehem. Now, Orpah, Orpah, she chooses to stay in the land of Moab. And by her choosing to stay, she's actually turning down an opportunity to turn her life around. And it could have turned her life around. You'll see how it, it actually it actually is a supernatural turnaround for Ruth. And, and Naomi does reap some of the benefits, but you're going to see how there's favor on Ruth's life, and there's a supernatural turnaround that takes place. Now, I got to give you. I got to real quickly. I got to. I got to give you. Uh, I want to share with you what some names uh, mean and represent in in the verses we're about to read real quickly. Ruth. Uh, Ruth's name means it means friend uh, or a vision of beauty. A vision of beauty, and I share that with you because I feel it's worth repeating. Ruth is also a type of church, and later on you'll see where, where Ruth and Boaz they 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 connect, and Boaz is a type of Christ. That's powerful. Ruth is a type of church, and Boaz is a type of Christ. Moab Moab represents Moab represents just short of the promised land. That's so good. <clears throat> And Bethlehem means, Bethlehem means house of bread or you guys know house of plenty. House of plenty. So we're going to read, this is what's so powerful, this is why I shared this with you. You can take a picture of it. I got to keep it, but watch this. We're going to read where, watch this, where, where favor, this is powerful, where God's favor, supernatural favor. He, he took Ruth from not enough, which is in Moab, to more than enough in Bethlehem, where it's going to take Ruth from being behind to being ahead where it's going to take, this is favor, and his favor is going to take Ruth from being beneath to above. Whew, hallelujah. Because, because in Moab, they were always behind. In Moab, they was just short of. But they're going to go to Bethlehem. And how many guys know Bethlehem? That also can represent the church. 
Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? A house of bread or a house of plenty. So they're about to go from Moab. Come on, somebody, to, 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 to just enough. They're about to go into Bethlehem where there's more than enough. Woo! Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? And how many guys know the favor of God can take you from just enough to more than enough? Mm. And so, <clears throat> so let's pick up on the story where the supernatural favor of God, listen to me, the supernatural favor of God will cause a supernatural turnaround in your life, and he does it for Ruth. Ruth, let's go to verse 1, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. It says this, Now, now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing, a man of standing from the clan of Emelech, whose name was Boaz. Now, a man from standing, you got to realize Boaz was a wealthy man. Boaz was a good-looking man. Boaz was a God-fearing man. Boaz was a good husband. For some single lady, if y'all hear what I'm saying. So, so you got to realize, and Boaz, Boaz, Boaz means pillar, and it also means strength. So if you're a single woman in here, you want to look for a Boaz. Y'all heard what I'm saying? You want to look for a Boaz. Not a bozo, but a Boaz. Y'all heard me say that before. You need to let bozo go and find your Boaz. Can I get an amen? Because favor will find your godsend. Favor will find your Boaz. Yeah, come on, somebody. Y'all are catching this. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Favor, favor. It was favor. I, I could say this boldly and declare it. And I, I don't boast to me. I boast in God and the supernatural favor. Listen to me. It was favor that caused me and Becky to find each other. I, I, you got to realize, I was, I was born in Colorado, came to Texas, lived in Pasadena, from Pasadena to Sugarland, Sugarland to Wharton, Wharton. All of a sudden, I connect with this woman from Wharton. She's a Whartonian. You could call it what you want. Oh, that's coincidence. No, I believe that was the favor of God, and I believe that was a divine connection. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So, ladies, supernatural favor. Favor will find your Boaz. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And and, and another time I'll share with you guys another little funny thing on that, but I'm not going to do that today. Amen. So watch. Let's go to verse 2. And watch this. And Ruth, the Moabite, and Ruth the Moabite, where she's Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go, watch this, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain. Please, please underline leftover, highlight it. She says, let me pick up, also highlight pick up. She says, let me go in the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in, who I, in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered the field, entered the field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. Behind the harvesters. There's so much in this. My Lord, show me what I need to share. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Amalek. Yeah, Amalek. And so watch this. Watch this. Number one, you got to see this. How many guys know favor could put you at the right place at the right time? She's at the right place in the field, in the field, at the right time. You're going to see that in a moment. But I want you to see something. Watch, this is powerful. Remember, I told you to highlight pick up and leftover. She says, let me go in the fields. Let me go in the field and pick up. How many guys know the fields can also represent, it can also represent the field of church? <clears throat> And let me go into the fields and pick up the leftover grain. Pick up behind anyone whose eyes I find favor. I find favor. How many guys know favor? Watch this. It's powerful. You want to write this down. Favor will position you to pick up things from others to help you go to a greater level. God, y'all catch that. I'm going to say that again. Favor. Watch this. Favor. Favor will position you. Favor will position you to pick up things from others to help you go to a greater level. You got to ask yourself, you got to ask yourself, who am I picking up leftovers from? Gar, y'all catching this. Who are you picking up leftovers from? Who, who are you picking up leftovers from? Because if it isn't taking you up, you need to step into a different field. Come on, somebody. Amen. 
And I also love this. This is what I love. This is what I love about Ruth, too. There's, like I said, I'm, I'm watching my time. I know my time. Yeah, I don't look at the clock, but I know my time. But listen to me. It, it, there's so much of this. You, you got to understand. This is what I love about Ruth. I love this. Listen to me. Oh, my. This, this, she's willing. Watch. She's willing to stop to start at a lower level before God's favor takes her to a higher level. And so many Christians, they're not willing to start out at a lower level before God takes them to a higher level. They want to start at a high level. But listen to me, if God took you to the high level right away, you don't have the character of the things inside of you to keep you there. So you need to allow God to do the work in you at a lower level, and then God's favor will take you to the higher level. Can I get an amen? Because if he took you to the higher level, you'd fall. He knows there's some things you've got to get before he can take you there. And y'all hear me say this a lot, this leadership, you got to start where you are, not where you want to be. Can I get an amen? This is powerful. This is powerful. And this is why, this is why Ruth, God's favor, elevated her. That's why she kept going up. Let's continue to read. Verse 4. Whoo, man. <clears throat> Just then Boaz arrived. Whoo, man. Man. There he is. He showed up. She's at the right place at the right time. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. They answered, uh, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of the harvesters, who does this young woman belong to? The overseer, overseer replied, she is a, a Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has uh, remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Now, I know i got to do this quickly, but this is so powerful. you got to realize something. I love this, and I'm just going to say it bluntly. Ruth wasn't lazy. I'm going to say that again. Ruth wasn't lazy. Ruth wasn't lazy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? She wasn't lazy. She wasn't lazy. She, she knew, and you got to realize something. God's favor will work in your life. But listen, if you will not, if you're not willing to work your faith, come on, can I get an amen? You're not going to see God's favor work for you. Come on, somebody. And listen, if you are, I love you, but if you're lazy in the physical realm, whoo, come on, somebody. God knows you're going to be lazy with spiritual things. That's powerful right there. Are y'all hearing me? It is true. Amen, brother. Amen. It's right here. So in other words, you can experience, listen to me, an increase of God's favor by demonstrating laziness. Come on, somebody. You got to work. You got to work. You got to work your faith. And you got to do your part. Can I get an amen? God, I need a job. God, why don't your favor give me a job? Would you have you filled out the application? You got to fill out the application and then God's favor can work for you. Come on, somebody. This is good preaching. God bless my finances. God bless amazing. People say, I'm in a hole. I need help. I need help. Did you sow a seed? He can't multiply nothing. He needs something. Well, I, I, he knows I ain't got nothing. Well, yeah, God will give you something because he gives seed to the sower. That's an excuse. Boy, oh boy. Isn't the word good? Can I get an amen? Oh, it's good. It's good. So watch this. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, uh, listen to me. Watch this. He says, don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. He said, stay here. He's got, she's got favor already. Stay here with the women who work for me. Verse 9, he says, watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. How many of you guys know that's divine protection? Right there. Booyah, that's divine protection right there. That's favor. And then uh, he said, and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men, the men have filled. And then verse 10. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you have noticed me, a foreigner? Because she's a Moabite. And how many guys know this, is, this, this quickly illustrates the fact that favor will always cause you to be noticed before others. And how many guys know it also sets you up for a promotion? Can I get an amen? When, when you're like, well, how did, how did I, how, I filled out the loan application. Nobody else got the loan, but I got it. How many guys know it's a supernatural favor of God? Can I get an amen? It's good stuff. And how many guys know favor? Watch this. This is powerful. You got to capture this. If favor, and I'm about to close. Favor will cause blessings to come to you, whether people think you deserve it or not. 
<clears throat> Come on, somebody. Well, you know, I've been in church longer than them, and I've done a lot of things for the Lords, and you know, a lot of things that happen. I, I don't think they deserve that kind of favor. Who are you? You ain't God. You don't know what they've done behind the scenes. You're just seeing what's on the surface. You don't know what they pray about at night. Can I get an amen? Matter of fact, they're probably praying for you this morning when you're talking about them. But anyways, uh, let's uh, not talk about that. Can I get an amen? Uh, yeah, why, why are they blessed like that? Why, are they getting, yeah, why is the favor working for them? Probably because you're talking like that. Come on, somebody. We've got to listen to ourselves sometimes. No, I'm serious. We really do got to listen to ourselves sometimes. Where, where did my child, where, why is she talking like that? You might want to listen to yourself. She either got it from her friend or she got it from her family. Anyways, let me leave that one alone. Let's come on back over here. Let's talk about the favor. God, tell your neighbor I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. 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 All right. All right. So watch this. Let's, let, let me continue. Let me continue. Remember, remember, we're talking about on point number one, the supernatural favor is God causing great things to happen in the midst of great impossibilities. How many of you guys know great things are already happening for, for Ruth? In, in, the, in the midst of great impossibilities, all of a sudden these, these th- things that you think couldn't happen begin to happen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Things that she couldn't do for herself, God does for her. So it leads me to point number two. Watch this. The supernatural favor God does for you which you cannot do for yourself. God is powerful. Let's read it out. Let's finish out. Verse 11. Boaz replied. He says, I've been told, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother in your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. Verse 12. May the Lord repay. I don't know about you. If man doesn't pay me, that's okay. But when God, I want God's repay. Can I get an amen? I want, I want God to repay. May the Lord repay you. For what you have done, may you be richly rewarded. Woo! That's favor, guys. Oh, my. God didn't want to give you just a little. God wants to give you more than enough. Come on, somebody. Not just enough to get by. Come on, somebody. He wants you to be able to pay the bills, put savings, and be able to be generous and give. Can I get an amen? You're blessed to be a blessing. This church is blessed to be a blessing. And if people do not think you deserve it, oh, well, at least God does. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, this is powerful. This is so good. So he says, here's Boaz who recognizes it. May the Lord Lord repay you for what you have done. May the Lord richly reward you by the Lord. This is powerful. The God of Israel, the God of Israel under whose wings, whose wings you have come to take refuge. Hallelujah. How many of you guys know that's why the church is supposed to be a place of refuge? Bethlehem. She took, she took refuge in Bethlehem. She took refuge in a house of plenty. She took, she took refuge in the house of bread. It's a place where we're supposed to come take shelter. We're supposed to take refuge. And how many guys know that the church is a shelter? And what's on the church, how many guys know, gives you not only divine provision, but also divine protection. Can I get an amen? That's why you want to be connected to, to, to the local church. This may not be your church, but you need to be connected to a church that God's called you to be. Because listen to me, when you're not in the church God has called you to be, how many guys know you may be a hand trying to act like a foot? No, I'm serious. It's true. And God never called you to be a foot. You're called to be a hand. Man, this is powerful. This is powerful. And just a real quick thing, quick thing. Don't, don't ever blame the church for you not growing spiritually. Spiritual growth happens in the home. And if it ain't happening in your life, it's because it ain't happening in your home. We'll clear that up real quick. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Now watch, now watch this. I got to close. I want to show you something. I want to show you how the supernatural favor of God, watch, watch, how, how, it, how, it, how what it did for Naomi that she couldn't do for herself. Remember the point is the supernatural favor of God does for you what you cannot do for yourself. Now watch, this is powerful. The favor of God put Ruth at the right place at the right time for a blessing. 
The favor of God watches cause Ruth to be blessed by people she didn't even know. The favor of God put Ruth in a position for a promotion she didn't even know was coming. The favor of God opened doors of opportunity for Ruth, for Ruth that she never even could open for herself. And the favor of God restored, this is powerful, it restored everything Satan had stolen from Ruth in a short amount of time. Hallelujah. The supernatural favor of God caused a supernatural turnaround for Ruth. And how many of you guys know if, the, if God's favor did that for Ruth, God's favor will do that for every Christian. But we've got to believe to receive. And we've got to learn to declare before it's demonstrated. And we've got to learn. We've got to learn. Hear my heart on this, church. And we've got to learn. We've got to learn to be willing to put our hand to the plow. We've got to be willing to step into the field. And we've got to be willing. We've got to be willing to, to continue, continue to pick up the leftovers. We've got to learn to continue, to continue to be in a, to be in a place, to be in a place. Allow God, allow God to, to lead us to a place, to, to stay in position. And when we're in position, how many of you guys know we're going to receive everything God wants us to have? Can I get an amen? And so here's what I'm going to close with real quickly, real quickly. I had to say that fast, but hopefully you guys caught that. Real quickly, I want two things I want to do. If you're in here, maybe you've maybe you've drifted. Maybe you've drifted from the Lord. It's it's amazing how sometimes we hear the word backslide. Backslide just means that you're you're not going anywhere and you're actually going backwards instead of forward in the Lord. You're getting further away from God instead of closer to God. And sometimes we can begin to drift. We can begin to drift and we don't even realize how far we are from God until we take a look at Jesus again. Are like, Lord, how did I get way back here? If you've ever been swimming in the ocean or boating, you can begin to drift and you realize, wow, I'm so far away from where I originally started. And there's some of you in this room, and I know by the Spirit of God, some of you guys feel like you're so far away from where you originally started. And I believe today is your day to come back. Can I get an amen? Today is your day to come back. You may have drifted, but listen to me, listen to me. It's your day to come right back. You may have stepped back 10 steps. Listen to me, it's one step back to Jesus every time. And if you're in here and you say, I've never surrendered my life to Jesus. Let me tell you something. I'm not telling you something Pastor Paul said. I'm telling you something the Bible says. And the Bible says, if you will surrender, meaning if you will call upon the name of the Lord, and if you will surrender your life to him, you will be saved. You will spend an eternity with him forever and ever and ever. Don't you let the enemy talk you out of that. Because the devil is a liar. If Jesus said it, that settles it. And so if you're in here right now and you feel like you say, Pastor, that's me, I've drifted. And I, I want to I come back. I want to come back. Or if you're in here and you say, I've never surrendered my life to Jesus. If you're watching online, I'm speaking to you too. Maybe that's you. I want to pray for you also. And so if that's you in this room, real quickly lift your hand. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. I see your hand. I see your hands. 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 Y'all can lower your hands watching online just lift your hands towards heaven and I'm about to pray and I'm going to pray and I'm going to lead you in this prayer but listen to me the connection isn't with me the connection is with God and so let's pray everybody repeat after me say dear Lord today I surrender my life to you come into my life make me new help me to live for you every day in every way Lord I receive your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. I thank you. I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Can y'all give them a hand? Hallelujah.